Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here at the final press conference for Sean McCombs. Huge Shawnee fight against Mac, Shawnee Shawnee Mac, Bear back. Bear back. Uh, tough fight against Godoy. I mean, you've just come face to face with him for the first time. How do you feel? Does, that, does it feel more real to you? Does, does, does it feel like fight nights? Yeah, it's just. It's, I can't. I just. This has been a, the most exciting I've been for a fight. I cannot wait to Saturday night. I don't understand why. Headlining? Headlining, maybe. I don't know. I don't even know what the crack is. It's just fucking. <laughs> I can't wait. It's one of them things. I just can't. I'm not even looking forward to a weigh-in, which is weird. I'm looking forward to fight. Um, most boxers, it's always a waiting game of boxing. You can't wait to press conference. You can't wait to weigh in to get your food, and you can't wait to fight. And you can't wait. It's all over to get a paint. But I just can't wait to fight. I don't understand why it's fucked up. Because you, you get into the chain room, you're making that ring walk, and you're nervous, and you're going, "What am I doing here?" Like, get me a nine to five job. This isn't for me here. Well, you're going. To, there's no turning back now. But at the same time, with Ray Vaughn, there's boxers, and it's just something I'm really looking forward to for for a change. I don't know why, but I, I just know that this fight is going to bring the best out of me. There's loads of ball points of, of why I could be so excited, but me knowing the outcome of this fight, I think I'm going to be victorious, and I. I think I'm gonna put on a brilliant, a brilliant display um, f for my support. All tickets, ticket buyers, all the people who pay their hard-earned money to come watch me. Um, and just, I don't know, just can't wait. He's very on the edge of his power. Um, he's a big puncher. There's no doubt about that. His record says it. That just brings my focus level to a whole new level. I'm a very focused fighter in terms of. Like even when I'm sparring and all, I'm, all, I'm always fully switched on, there's no fucking about it to me, but the fact that he carries that power means I have to carry out my game plan to 100%, and uh, that's something I'll need to do for the full 10 rounds, because they know how much power he carries, and uh, that'll just bring me right up to the elite performance level. Uh, like what's going to be easy for you? Oh, well, I'm, I'm two pound over now. Um, I haven't done a sweat session yet, not one. I'm going to trace the steam floor again, just, I can't, the reason why is it's all, it's a shock to me how easy I make them wait because, because of steam floor, my nutritionist, where in the amateur days I was going, oh, fucking, uh, eating all the wrong stuff right up until Floyd done his nutrition, his master's in nutrition and he's a good friend of mine growing up and now I'm just so tuned into it, I know exactly what, what to eat, exactly when to eat, how much grams of what to eat, and when to eat it, and he just gives me day to day, day to day, basically what to eat, based on my training sessions, and he's been telling me to move down a little bit, I'm stubborn, saying I don't want to, why would I? Because I'm going to win it, one forward anyway, which I'm very confident I will do, but I spoke to MTK, I was out in Dubai, I was speaking to Danny, Speaking to Sandra, speaking to Jamie, speaking to representatives from MTK, and uh, the opportunity can come at, at lightweight. And I need to make these sacrifices. Whether I win at 140 or not, it'll take longer than it will at lightweight. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm eager to get to the top soon. And if that means making a sacrifice, get down to lightweight 135, I'm all for it. It's powerful. Like, um, headlines, one thing, fighting in Rome, town headline. And the Ulster Hall, iconic Ulster Halls, another thing. Just unbelievable. I mean, I fought in the pack there also hall before. It's not a new experience to me. The only difference experience, the only different experience is here is in, in headline. I mean, I'm, I'm in front of the bill. Look at look, look at the, look at that ugly fella. Yeah, it's been air brushed. Fuck <laughs> me, what? Jesus Christ, you would scar hungry lamb. <laughs> uh, but no, that's it. Just me and Vant in the face of the show, and uh, I've, like I say, I've fought in the pack there also hall before. So uh, it's just the same thing again. Go and enjoy it. My main thing is to enjoy boxing. I enjoy it every day. Um, so for me to win, I just need to win. Fully focused on what I have to do and enjoy every minute of it. So. Right, let's hope you're both in the dressing room. Know what I expect. Act like professors at all times. Obey my instructions. Watch your reds and keep it clean. Any questions? Let's go to work.
10 rounds then at 140 pounds. And when you mention the weight, just look at the length and size of McComb. Round one. 27, he is McComb, talented Southport, unbeaten so far in nine. And in truth, the tests for him, they are coming thick and fast. But yeah, and this is another massive step up. Is it? Being a tall, long southpaw is a massive advantage, but you have to use them. You have to keep that right foot on the outside all the time. Doesn't always do that, McComb. Of course, Tyrone McKenna in the same weight. He's ringside, of course, part of the, the golden contract ongoing. He's through to the semi-finals of that uh, super lightweight encounter. So, O'Hara Davis, of course, in that tournament as well at this weight. You'll be able to see that in due course. Trying to get on the front foot, McComb. Oh, lovely, lovely. Miss, miss with the left hand, McComb there, but a lovely right short right hook. Really sharp start from McComb, looking to get on the front foot, looking to take control of centre ring. Hands getting through from McComb, he was able to stay in range and clip Godoy a couple of times. Bodo needs to do something, he's not doing nothing, he's just standing there waiting to get hit almost. It looks like he's waiting for that perfect shot. I don't know if he's weighed down by those fajitas I saw him eating for <laughs> lunch earlier on this afternoon. I know it's hard for him to establish the jab against a tall southpaw. He needs to get a little bit lower, just try and get underneath that jab of McComb there, and maybe land that right hand to the body, left hook over the top. Too crude. And, and I, I always wonder about that, sort of refueling, Barry, you know, food post way in to, the day of the fight, you know, Ricky Hatton, the, the tourist that used to have a fry up, didn't he, as his sort of his, his reward for, for getting through training camp, and didn't do him any harm. This is a good confident start from McComb. Yeah, it really is. And again, it's a good confident start. He's been the, been the guy with the, using his initiative, but again, not rushing anything. Nice controlled display so far. And then, to be fair, there's nothing coming back here from, from Goldo. I think the, the, the impressive thing from McComb is not a, only the positive start, but it, it's the control. And he's, he's really got the, the space, hasn't he? Timing and range already sussed out through the first couple of minutes. Nice little long right hand there, a little pivot with the front foot there from McComb. Corner as well. And a confident start. Just stay switched on, I think was the, the watch phrase throughout those instructions. I don't know what they, what they told Gordo in the corner, but it surely must have been let your hands go. I'll tell you what, he just landed one of those body shots across the midriff that gave McComb some problems against uh, Dominguez, the Argentinian, last time. Right. Well, some people, you know, it's just a matter of inter interpretation, isn't it? It's how you use a situation like that. Some say it's a, would say it's a potential weakness. Others, and McComb might say, well, uh, A, I've learned from it, but B, yeah, I've learned I can get through that. Yes. Do you want my what McComb's got to be careful of. When, when he went forward there with the double jab, he brought the, his lead foot inside the inside the lead foot of, of Goldo, and, that, and it, that's where, you know, you get caught with the right hand there, you've got no balance, you're, you're, too, you're too side on. Got to keep stepping on the outside when he's coming forward. Belfast man, of course, McComb. He so much so he was able to walk to the Falls Park. Oh, yeah. Last summer for that big uh, Condon Filo and Fogel extravaganza. What a terrific outdoor fight night that was. And we showed you on ESPN Plus and IFL TV. Oh, using eyes 
That left hand from McComb. Yeah, they, they're, just, they're just skimming the target. They're scoring shots, but they're just skimming the target, not quite fully connecting. Still off the rub still there from McComb, just stopping any any sort of follow attack there from, from Godo. Another thing as well, but it was of course, it, not only did, was he knocked down, really one real scare in that fight last time up. He was cut over both eyes too. But Godo knew, he knew what he was in for, having spoken to McComb's last reporting, he knew that McComb was, was cagey and creative and, and difficult. He knew it was going to be a difficult night. Perhaps that explained his, his start to it. Well, it's the wide stance of McComb, and that, that's what he has. That's going to have the trouble, because he thinks he'll get close, but McComb's got to lean back, and then he can escape there and push up the front foot. Oh, big right hand there from the Argentinian. I'm not sure there's a little bit of a graze or a cut over the right side there of McComb. The second will that give Godoy uh, any sort of encouragement now? Platform, perhaps. Oh, you think so? Godoy, and Godoy, especially the way McCoon steps in with that when, when he throws the jab, he brings that foot on the inside of the of the stance. So Godoy needs to double up with that with that right hand. So McCoon's dad was very much a boxing fan who. Got him into the sport initially, both his older brothers, Fox, particularly David, who multiple Irish champion in his time. Good jab there from McCone. And again, there's a little step off. Good feet there again there from McCone, just in a lot of distance to land that right hand. He's looking pretty sharp and accurate again the start of this round with Combe. He is, he just, he's got to remember when, when, when you move back just to stay a little bit lower, keep, that, keep those legs a little bit bent. Just don't lift that chin too high. The right hand there from Gordo and again. Yes, yeah, every now and then he just manages to close the gap and get his shots off. And that's when he got to work away, when he gets inside the, the reach there. Uh, of McCone. In this distance, it's going to be a hard and nice work for him. Maybe just a little low there, but so far, Godo giving the impression that he's not been troubled by oh. anything. The right hand there from Godo. He's a bit wild, isn't he, when he throws his shots, but every now and then, he's just having a bit of success. But the thing is, he's in the right thing, he's going low and swinging high when McCone throws because he knows McCone. Stays nice and tall when he throws his shots. Oh, couple of short body shots, sharp punches from McComb. Flashy, that was good stuff from him. Yeah, clever stuff. The, the, the exit as well off the ropes was really good. So the right hand there, though, from Gordo. Some good efforts from him. And just the odd moment that this Argentinian could be a bit of rough and tumble. The McCombs not switched on. Probably a different dynamic to the camp as well this time for McComb. Of course, he's, he's been used to the two Tyrones being around in that. Oh, the shot! Oh, is he hurting McComb? He might have hurt him. Certainly, the crowd thinks so. Although the Argentinian beckons him on, and I, I think Godoy is has regrouped. There's no need to rush his work here, though, McCollum, though. He need to pick, pick his shots, keep that, maintain that distance. McCollum is going after him as if he thinks he is hurt. Another left hand gets through. 
and he's mixing it up, head and body, McCone. This is intelligent stuff. Is he throwing all his chips into the ball? It's a good shot again there. Just didn't even get too close to that front foot. Put those shots nice and long. The, the eyes of Godoy are, are clear. However it may appear from the balcony in the back of the room, not sure Godoy is as hurt as it, it might have appeared. That was a lovely shot from McComb that started it all off, and he's very much in, con in control of this one. Good shot there. The second, the second left hand was a better shot. Again, he gets it. Could he get when he gets that foot on the outside there, McComb? Then he can land the clear of shots. That's the second time how of course has warned him about a low blow. McComb. Well, that's it. It's good God who's back in his shell again, hasn't it? Yes. And he's getting a little bit, a little bit more adventurous with some of the shots in the last round. And it's just, just giving uh, McComb a little bit more control. Maybe a little more substance to the control. Hand there, Ngodu. Oh, lovely little ball up in the corner. Oh, that really was a cute counter right hand. A little bit of a flurry, it was a low blow from Godoy, but. Really, I think in all that we've seen so far, Godoy shouldn't shouldn't quite be good enough to, to trouble McComb if he switched on. That's how it appears. Yeah, there needs to be much more urgency in the work, doesn't it, of, of Godoy if he's going to make a real impression, unless he, he gets he catches him with a big shot when he, when he lunges in. But if you said if, if McComb stays switched on, stays focused, then you tend to think he'd just be a little. Half uh, a step ahead. Oh, so that, that little uh, half a step back and left hand again there. McComb. That's better for McComb, taking a step on the outside when he throws the jab. Far too often he steps inside the inside the guard there of, 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 of the stance there of, of Godo when he throws out right hand jab. Sammy looks uh, switched on defensively though as well, McComb. And left hand's worked for him tonight. I was just about to say, Barry, actually before that I wonder that it would have been a different training camp. He was Obviously, in that sort of madhouse flat in, in Glasgow with the two Tyrones, McCullough and McKenna. The training now with Pete Taylor. Now, a slightly different vibe for him in the build up to this one. Again, nice long left hand again there from McCall. But not rushing, he's working nice, the distance nice and long. And he's just starting to push Godoy around the ring. Putting together a, a sequence of movements and a combination of shots now. Good right to, he doesn't look hurt there, Godo, but he looks a little bit lost, doesn't he? And McCollum certainly isn't waiting for this, Godo. Just a little sluggish retreat to the ropes from the Argentinian. Godo's got to start fighting back, he just can't stay on the ropes and take shots. Gotta show a willingness to fight back. That's better. Okay, he doesn't never 
really seemed seriously hurt by them. He just like, he feels sorry for himself at times. And that's two back to back big rounds from the corner. To, to do what he wanted and pressure him all round the ring. He is, he's, you know, he's engineering him around the ring, he's doing what he wants at the minute, McCormick. It's just it's not enough real work ethic behind anything that, that Goddles wants to do when he does try and land. McCormick just says he half a step back and back to him with that left hand. Is the Argentinian starting to feel it? It's just slowly McCormick chipping away at him. Going behind McComb too. He's a popular lad, no doubt about that. It's a good start of the round here from McComb there, straight away putting Goddard under pressure. Oh, the left hand this time looping over the top. Oh, good right hand. Missed up with the following left, but the right hand was a lovely shot. Been training out to, in Dubai actually for this one as well. I mentioned the sort of build up. Good body shot. Ah, suddenly Godoy's woken up. Well, he's spent a lot of time out in, in Dubai, but, but round 10 gym among others. And the, the thing that we've been working on, Fanny, and he said this specifically in the, the build up to this one, is a, a, a bit more sort of for the power shots. That was one of the things they took out of the last contest. But sometimes, you know, one shot can be enough to. To win you around, they learned that from the body shot uh, against Dominguez. So they'll be working on maybe planting the feet a little bit yep. and just try to go through a sequence and maybe landing one or two power shots at least in each round. And we've seen that the left hand, we've seen more of it in this fight perhaps than any other. Yeah, we have. He's placing that right, that left hand really well. Oh, that's the right hand there back from, from Godel, but. Good sustained pressure here from, from McComb. Yeah, really accurate as well. That was a one, two, three. McComb, oh, oh what, lovely bit. What a beauty. The footwork there was good. He just took a little, not even quite a half a step back, just made Goddle miss with, with a little um, little counter attack and then ping those three punch combination right on the button. It's good pressure here without really putting his foot on the gas. Still taking his time. Yeah, really intelligent. Pressure. Although he's, he's not hurt Godoy as such, but the Argentinians look like he, he might be ready to crumble or go down. He's, he's blinking and he's getting through McComb. Shot. Oh, uh, tried a bit of a Lomachenko there, didn't he? McComb, the angle clipped. Trying to use that hand to move the hand away to throw the left. Or well, the right, as you say. But the big rounds from the corn, they keep on coming. See what you're pacing yourself, like you said, you're doing everything I'm asking you to do. Don't give them absolutely nothing. You're boxing big. Now we'll build on that again now. Again, another really good round for here from the corn, I thought. Good pressure. Patient with his work there, the accuracy for most of the round was pretty good. They see it there, the little half, half a step back there, three points combination. Sorry, Barry, I think they're going to pull him out. I think they're pulling out. God, I think they're going to pull him out. He's complaining about his jaw, and they pulled him out. They pulled him out. And you have to say, whatever's happened in that corner, McComb made it happen. I thought, I thought he was excellent. That's his, that's, again, this is another fight, biggest test 
best performance. And you can't ask for more than that. I think that, that was a really good performance. Controlled, uh, uh, mature in many ways, picked his shots well, made very few mistakes. The only mistakes he was making, was, for me, was having that front foot inside the stance of his opponent every now and again. But, and he, he slowly applied the pressure, wrong by wrong. So by, by there, the, the final round there we had with him, you know, the pressure was really solid there and didn't give him... Godo any breathing space at all. That front foot kept him under pressure. A long straight left hand. You know, made he feel him, made he kept him the back to him, made he feel sorry of himself at times. And if there is a problem with that jaw, it was all done with a lovely left hand there of, of Sean McComb. Ladies and gentlemen, the red corner retired their boxing before the start of round number seven, and the referee accepts their retirement. Declaring your winner, Sean Sugar McCall. I'm here with Sean. <laughs> Sean McCall, man, what a performance, mate. I mean, after your last performance being dropped and all that going the distance, was this was this the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is. Uh, people always seen this, the, the skill I had, um, especially people coming in around the gym with Danny. And just Danny can't, I always hear Danny saying it, and people saying the skill I have. People who see me behind closed doors training and sparring and stuff. And <clears throat> the night was more, it wasn't a skillful performance. It was just, there was maybe three key factors that I had to go out and do there. night. Part of the game plan, and I've done exactly that. So it just lets you know that I can adjust my skill is adjustable and I'm able to, to adjust to the, the fight. Especially on a big platform, main event for the first time and uh, against a, a really dangerous operator and Maximiliano Godoy with 17 knock and 32 wins. So, sweet. What? I don't know, was like, like it? it's mad. I, who, what? I just can't understand why anyone would give a fuck. It's madness. Like, it's just to me, it's like... People go, like, I was out all day, like, fucking about, farting about, out, and people wanted to fight the night. And I was going on, and we're like, not bad, chill out. I was in the bookies doing a football bet for the third class score. We're like, not chill out, you know, get to I was like, did you keep it coming? No, I didn't. I got stuffed. Fucking Liverpool won 4 0. I had both teams to score. <laughs> fucking scumbags. That's a clear right there. Oh, fucking nightmare. Fucking Liverpool beat the bet, just cunts. <laughs> Mo Salah. Mo Salah! <laughs> Uh, so uh, I know it's just um, I'm fighting harder opponents for no take. I mean, like, again, like, he he fought Vargas and got a draw. Mm -hmm. He fought Amir Khan. He's, like Vargas has only lost five times against five world champions. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's the level I'm fighting at. And uh, with no take on the night. Still selling out the Ulster Hall, twelve hundred people. That's a small venue, but I mean, it's the atmosphere was it was, the atmosphere's phenomenal. And. I, like, uh, surely, surely, I'm, I'm close now to the title. But uh, I mean, again, you're going to see this, I don't give a fuck, Alex, because it's the truth. I don't give a fuck because my attitude is not what I have now or what title I have now. It's where I finish in my career mm. with world titles. See so if I go from now with no titles for the next year to a world title, give me it. Because all the other titles on the way up don't, give, I don't mean fuck all the media. Because I aspire to be a world champion. Would that be done at 135, 140? 135, 140, 140, skimmy, 147. I'm big, I'm man tall. I'll bulk, I'll fucking. I'll get the creatine in there. The Twixies, the Mars bars. Get the Mars bars in. Sassy suppers with skin pulled back. Fuck me, man. Oh, I don't even know what else to talk about, Sean. I mean, fucking, what's happening next for you then? Obviously, Jimmy's obviously said a few things to you. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to sort of say them. Like he said, them, he said it in conference. Um, there's a, there was two big shows in Belfast this year. Mm -hmm. When all, like that, he, he said it in the press conference the other day, coming this summer. Two I'm massive the platforms. Fails one, yeah. fail one yeah. of them. Bang bang, Ruby T. Hey, hey. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Surely on one of them shows, mm. MTK, they've looked after me massively. I couldn't, I really couldn't thank them enough. The word have got me up the eye and they've put great belief in me, Jamie, you know, all, everyone behind me, Danny, the whole lot of them, Sandra, they're all, they, they all know now. I'm a good guy, I'm a nice fella, I enjoy a bit of crack, I'm an everyday person, I'm a very, like, humble person, you know what I mean? It's not like, I'm, I'm gonna say mad. 
fucking crazy, you're, you're, you're sporadic, <laughs> you're fucking, I can name all the wow. things that you're not naming, like. Well, sure, we'll, we'll keep you in this here, <laughs> keep you in for an order. Well, if you want to know what he's up to, he's nah. going on holiday next week, so just follow his Instagram. What's follow his Instagram, just Sean McComb, straight up, Shawnee Mac, Sean McComb, and we'll see me on holiday next week. And trust me, for somebody that follows him, you don't want to miss his Instagram. This is what happens on holiday, right? get up at 7 o'clock every morning, do a five mile run, come <laughs> back, cook a asparagus steak <laughs> and eggs come back 400 press ups back out again three pints two jager bombs four whiskies <laughs> three fights three bu- pub fights and I uh, pass out that's it and that by the way I can vouch for that that's 100% possibly happen. get arrested so if anyone knows me and wants to post me bail money Feel free. Because they have done it in Australia. So. <laughs> They've done it in Australia. Been arrested a few places. Exactly. So keep that we'll, keep, keep that, we'll, keep we'll, that we'll keep that as the past. We'll talk, we'll think about nah, the future now, Sean. Nah. Well, new, listen. New year, new me. New year, new me, exactly. Sean, love interview, my friend. Yes. Can't wait to see you back in the ring. Yeah. I'll probably see you after your holiday when you come back to MTK Squad again. Thanks for this 5 TV and uh, You're the one. Bang, bang, every chip. Ah! Yeah.